All right. So we're just going to start and um, recording wise, anyone that jumps in later, this um, recording will be available on the group. I'll also email it to everyone and it'll be available on my social channels. Um, I apologize if people pop into the call and somehow their audio Mercury retrograde amazingly just auto switches on. I'll try my best to um, mute them as they come in. Um, you can chat to us throughout the whole time between me and Erin, we'll be looking at the um, chat. So Feel free to give us feedback, interact with us, ask us questions. Um, thank you for making the effort to come in. I know in New Zealand it's a really awkward time. Most of you should be at work, and if you are at work, then very sneaky. Hello. Um, and then I know that some people are tuning in later from LA and New York and Sydney and the like. So, um, my name's Emma. This is the New Moon um, Gathering event, which is our second event and the whole purpose of this event was basically to create a free online gathering where people could connect, check in, um, feel part of a collective, get some free insight and wisdom and not feel so bloody alone um, in a world that is so quickly changing in such a beautiful way but it can also seem really overwhelming and bloody scary. So I had a situation where I was in Bali, Erin's just come back from Bali, that's why she looks so beautifully tan, <laughs> um, and um, I was surrounded by the most beautiful um, souls, a group of women, um, it tore me apart in the most beautiful way, I've probably never been so vulnerable and open, it's been a good part of my holiday crying um, in, a, in a joyous way, and I came back feeling like I never want to have another new moon alone. And I won't, and hopefully neither will you. So these gatherings are um, no strings attached, um, free of judgment, an opportunity for you to take what you need, leave the rest, connect on your terms, whether it's through live connection, through the live chat, or whether it's watching the video or chatting through the group when you need. Um, it's a place for all of us, so it's not exclusive. Um, there's no hierarchy. There's no I'm more spiritual than you. None of that crap. Um, and it's also not gender specific, so yes, it's very goddess um, focused, but femininity is also in all of us, male and female, so um, all welcome, anyone's welcome, and yeah, I just want to get started. So this month is um, in support of a group called the Tribal Trust Foundation um, that's headed up by a beautiful soul called Barbara. Who I met in Bali, and she has um, been on a global quest visiting um, tribes in the heart of Congos and putting her life literally on the line to um, save indigenous cultures, um, indigenous stories, and really nourish the children of the next generation coming through in, from our indigenous elders. She's amazing, and the work that she's doing is amazing, and particularly at a time where. Um, the elders are very wise, particularly the females who we know um, throughout time have always been the ones respected in tribes, not necessarily the chiefs or the leaders, but the voice of reason. And the reason why it was such an organic fit for this month is because um, in almost every indigenous tribe, the women are the ones that say when enough is enough. And they say when... Um, it's time to give the earth a chance to rejuvenate or when hunting a particular animal needs to come into itself to be reborn or when to shift and move or to change the way that we approach life. And so this new moon being Leo, being everything about femininity and um, our ancestors and regrouping to our roots and our femininity just seemed really organic. So two of you have already donated um, worth who is a divine soul with Stokes and also Jennifer Faulkner, Jen. Um, thank you so much for your donations. Um, together it's about $150. I'm going to double that. And given that I like numerology numbers, I'm going to we don donate $333. And three being the birth, the pregnant creativity um, number seems fitting as well. So I'm so excited to stop talking and give my beautiful goddess of the month here a chance to connect with you all. Um, her name is Erin. I adore this woman on so many levels. She's a personal friend, but also I look up to her in many ways. She's a straight shooter. She's not afraid to speak her truth, 
which I love. And Erin is the owner of um, a business called Golden Yogi. She's a Kundalini teacher. She's a public um, figure, mentor. Um, and I just cannot wait to share her with you today. So everyone, this is Erin O'Hara. Hi. <laughs> so excited to be here. So Erin, um, this moon, can you tell us a little bit more about it? So the new moon at the moment is also a solar eclipse, so it's incredible power for change. Um, and back through history, through all the ancestors, they would always use this time of change with the solar eclipse to cleanse. And usually with the new moon, you would usually do a lot of cleansing techniques. Um, with a lot of different religions and different tribes, we quite often do fasting on the new moon. Oh. In particular, also on the solar eclipse as well, even more power. So that's why it's so turbulent at the moment. You notice around the community, there is so much going on. People kind of go a bit crazy around the moons. Um, also named, you know, lunatics around the, the lun lunar changes. And women are so um, influenced by the changes in the moon and the phases of the moon. Um, and so with the new moon, it's a, it's a time of change, but it's also really exciting because you can put out whatever intentions you want to create and manifest and allow them to evolve and happen. And that's the power of new moon. New moon is my favorite part of the month that really sets you up for the month. If you haven't kind of set out what your intentions are, then what do you know what you're going to do? Um, and that's what's so incredible about a new moon, but also this one in particular um, some places in the world, solar eclipses don't happen all the time. So having that time where there's a sun influence as well, which also is the sun energy in us, really charges us up. So there's superpower behind this moon um, and we can create some amazing change all around the world as we all come together, which is so exciting. So excited. See? See, this is why I have her here, guys. I'm just like... <laughs> so... This, we haven't had a solar eclipse like this in 99 years, which is so interesting. And the moon, like you say, we're also connected to the moon, to kids, females, intuitively. So I want to ask you, your gut, your intuition, as someone who's quite connected and beautifully feminine, what's your feel for this moon? For this moon? It's a real, I think it's a real opening for a lot of creative change. Um, and being also in Leo, there's a lot of change creatively, which is also very related to all the lower chakra energy. And that's why it feels also can feel a little instinctual as we're in the lower chakras. That's the sort of real instinctual sort of being of the body rather than being up in these upper chakras where we're a little bit more connected to intuitive guidance. So it's a time though that really moves energy as all like the Kundalini energy sits dormant down here in the lower chakras. So we can create a lot of flow of energy in the change and you can really embrace it and utilize it in the way that you choose to practice and turn inwards and and um, use the power of the energy of the, the moon and use it through the month. So not just the starting point, but actually harness it for your month ahead and superpower things when it gets to full moon, which is also a time where women also get a little bit more vulnerable <laughs> as you go through that turbulent full moon as well. But actually it's a time where the energy is really full, really full and powerful and if you've set yourself up at the new moon it's going to be a lot easier to glide through that full moon as well awesome so i really like to make everything practical i know everyone's sitting there thinking but how can i relate it to me so i'm going to be really honest and raw right now and let you guys know i've had the roughest two weeks it hasn't been rainbow and unicorns it's been emotional and extreme up and lows um, I was talking to a girlfriend the other day who gave me some incredible insights and shared with me that she also felt the squeeze um, and love and life and everything. So how, like what the fuck can we do um, to help really use this time to really tap in and tune in? Like I, I, I guess part of my fear mm. is I don't want to heighten any of the the anxiety that's floating around me at the time, at the moment. So how, how can we all create some space or, or come in to feel a little bit more 
like we're gonna be okay i don't know is anyone else feeling like that well when we're in a space of like anxiety and fear we actually become more into like a reactive space so rather than actually letting our intentions be stated we just be in that real snappy zone you'll notice that when you're feeling like that and you're a little bit on edge Whenever anyone says anything to you, you're just more going to sort of snap rather than take that little mindful breath and go, hold on, what is going on here? And actually, my favorite thing to do for, for being able to balance through all these changes energetically is daily practice. Like I cannot go past getting up in the morning and I know I'm a super crazy person. I get up at four o'clock and I um, I've seen here I, for it. I love to practice in the in the real stillness of the night and I love looking at the moon energy as I walk my way to the yoga studio usually to practice and mainly meditation, but actually doing some sort of foundations, whether it's for you a meditation practice, a mindfulness practice whether it's just taking time to go for a little morning walk or moon gaze or stargaze, whatever it is for you, but actually taking that time to bring yourself together and contain yourself and your energy. And it'll help you then when you flow into your day and when you are feeling in those very reactive states, actually behaving a little bit more mindfully rather than being the reactive lion that kind of leaps at someone <laughs> Hunt, rather than a <laughs> hunter that actually takes the moment to not be the reactive person but instead actually have intention behind the way that you behave. Yeah. And if more people will behave like that, we're going to be a lot more conscious all across the world if everyone actually takes their moment of time to think about the way that they're behaving and be more mindful in the way that you live rather than just going and sitting on your mat and doing a practice and then coming out of it and being the but actually not actually living the what you're practicing in the morning. Um, the teachings that I follow, Kundalini Yoga, usually we would devote two and a half hours, which is 10% of your day, to inner reflection. And inner reflection can then reflect outwards to your outward reflection in the way that you live. Um, so having some sort of way of keep bringing yourself back to your own true identity and that's what the word satna means is my truth mm -hmm. and actually connecting to your truth that will help you through your everyday sort of life and the way that you like to live um, and be more mindful in the way that you behave and I, it'll be great to see um, more conscious beings and the teachings, Yogi Bhajan, he was also all about empowering women because if you really want to create a lot of true change on the planet, you empower women because they do a lot of the child rearing and bringing up children and putting in the philosophies in a tribe, whether it's a family unit or a big community, as actually women are the ones that make change and help to create change. And so as women, which a lot of us are here on this group, um, but men can as well, but women are ones that can really create some conscious change in the planet. And the more that we behave consciously, the more that we embrace practices that can keep bringing us back to your own true inner reflection, we can actually make a better world for us yeah. as well. Well said. I'm so glad that you're here. Um, and that was such a perfect answer because... I know all of us have days or moments where we're confronted by someone that trigger something or make us want to fight or flight. At the moment, particularly, you just have to read the news and you can see it, the reactions of different people. And I think um, what I have loved seeing is the leaders, whether it's Arnold Schwarzenegger, who I watched, watched this morning, <laughs> who is shown to be a warrior, a Viking, a masculine, being so feminine, um, Barack Obama, um, you know, people that are really being reflective in their space and are saying it's a new time, it's a new age. New age thinking means new way to act, to move forward. And, you know, that, that movement that so many of us have been swirled into, that creative change of, of mindfulness and awakening and, and becoming in tune and, and reflecting and really taking time in that space is coming into movement and motion and action um, and that feminine moving forward and that's what I meant by femininity isn't exclusive to females I'm seeing so many male leaders at the moment do it really well and others do it really badly um, 
<laughs> but actually to have um, to create change you're always going to have that turbulent flow and it's really exciting as well and it depends on how you view it you can either view it as oh my god my world is so intense I can't cope mm -hmm. or you can view it as oh my gosh this is so exciting something new and exciting is happening and the world is changing and, and be in that space and you'll find that you'll cope with the change through these times that are so turbulent wherever you are in the world it doesn't really matter yeah. um there's always this change and there's a lot of change happening at the moment um which is really exciting i love that like changing your perception on change i mean change is inevitable you guys we're constantly going to evolve and grow and be pushed to learn new lessons so you better embrace that because that is the point um the point so i want to ask you Say all these beautiful souls here get confronted, whether it's a dickhead at work, their partner's triggered them in some way, they've watched something that's just got under their, their grip, maybe they've watched it, seen a Trump meme that's just sent them over the edge. <laughs> all right, we all have something that can trigger us. What are the three key things that they can do? Three key things. Okay. Sorry, um, I just put it on the spot. <laughs> just so you guys know, um, we haven't talked about any of these questions. This is authentic. Right <laughs> off it. So no pressure there. Sorry. <laughs> That's all good. <laughs> um, so three key things to keep you really stable. My number one thing is just always coming back to your, your own inner connection and that reflects your outer world. And where, however that is for you is coming inwards and listening to your inner guidance. And I know some of my great mentors that help me, which to be honest, are not all females. I've also got some amazing male helpers out there that guide me through this lifetime. And quite often it's about listening within. And they'll usually ask me, oh, what does your intuition say in this instance? When I'm like, oh, this is really intense right now. I'm not sure which direction to go. They'll always say, well, what does your, what does your intuition say? And having the true friends like that is really amazing and a helpful tool as well. And even one of my amazing true friends <laughs> that'll pull me in and say, hey, what do you think on this? And what's your view of it? And that inner guidance system, you can't really go past it. And sometimes we forget that it's there for us. And you can use it in every day. Every day, whenever you're confronted is, and sometimes you just need that little reminder of somebody else to say to you, what are you what's your inner world saying? Or what's your intuition telling you on this situation? And, and that actually makes you behave in a different way and actually makes some more conscious choices because sometimes externally what feels like the right decision is actually not what you're feeling inside. And I know that everyone gets a little bit confused when it comes to those sort of situations mm -hmm. where internally you're like, oh, no, this doesn't feel right. And externally you're like, oh, actually, like, it makes sense, common sense to follow this direction. And I think that's where we kind of get a little bit torn. And that's where I always, my, me personally, I love to just always turn back to intuitively what is the right decision. But actually um, that takes practice and you actually need to be having an internal experience and an internal practice to be able to really use that because our ego loves to jump on in and um, really confuse the intuition that you're like, oh, is it that or is it this? Um, and so really coming back to that true intuition comes with the meditation and the developing of the mind and, and actually trusting what messages are coming to you as well. Yeah. Do you know, so, I love what you just hit on, instinct versus intuition. And that's, as females, sometimes we forget that we've had experiences, so our instinct is to go, that happened to me, so that must mean that this might be happening again, versus what we truly know is happening. And I will be the first to admit that I can be a female, and I can go around and say, what percentage do you think that this means that that <laughs> happened? <laughs> and that's how I know that I'm not listening. And, you know, it's so funny, I can see one of my, I think she's here. Let's have a look. Yeah, Worth. So hi, Worth. Um, we actually had an hour-long chat the other day at opposite ends of the globe on a morning, and we just got talking about the art of listening. And it was about what makes a good listener, whether if you're just quiet and letting someone talk, 
whether you're asking the right questions to get to the core of someone's soul or if it's actually about reflecting and digesting you know, so, so what are the you biggest doing? thing with listening is quite often, even if you're asking the question, you won't even answer, listen to the answer. Um, quite often you're busy preparing what else you're next going to ask or what else you're thinking or what else you're going to do the rest of the day. And it's a really interesting, it's probably another key one to keep you present and in the moment, is just simply listening. Listening to what actually you're hearing and actually digesting what's, what's being said. And even if it's something that you don't even agree about, but actually listening to what their viewpoint is rather than being the reactive dragon at the other side of wanting to snap and react to the situation of simply being in that present moment of listening to exactly what is being said and hearing it, not just hearing it through your ears, but actually hearing it through your soul and your being of what it is that's being said and talked about. Um, and experiencing that and then it'll make you behave more mindfully. Um, so we've got our well, three things. What were we doing? <laughs> um, so three things like using your intuition, listening. Third thing, hmm, um, what would that be? <laughs> uh, just beh behaving more mindfully, I think. Acting, acting, the way we behave. Um, which is always such an interesting thing is the way we behave and the way we choose to behave. And it is a choice in the way that you behave um, that sometimes we forget that and we just go more into instincts and also into what one of my favourite teachers would call it cloaking. And Ooh. I know that that's something that's not talked about a lot, but cloaking is something that is taking all your past experiences that can be from this lifetime or past lifetimes and then cloaking it onto a new situation and then going well, that is the situation this is what like what you said what happened last time so this is what's going to happen this time and it's actually um, a big thing that affects your mind and the way that you react is cloaking as past cloaks of experiences that are going on to a new situation and one way that we can actually break that cycle is through breathing and meditation and also using mantra for anyone that uses mantra. Mm -hmm. um, mantra is the real power of changing the mind, of using sound, and that's what the essence of mantra is and it can be any sort of mantra that you want to choose, whatever sort of religion you follow or whatever practice you like to follow, but having something that can kind of cut through the darkness and change that pattern of the way that you think. Um, and so mantra is a good thing to turn to to cut through cloaking patterns and create some change. Yeah, which is yeah. powerful when we're shifting through these changes ourselves to have mindfulness, listening, that conscious action in terms of being responsible for the how we're showing up every day and then those and tools pushes. yeah so those tools so mantras you know yeah. um Erin actually introduced me to mantras <laughs> and I will be the first to admit that I sat in the room where everyone else had their eyes closed and I had one eye open sort of looking around going what the hell <laughs> is going on um but I stayed and I fell in love with it so I just want to say if, if mantras aren't you, your thing or you find them alienating sit with them so I have them on my phone. I get ready to um, a whole pile of Kundalini mantras, whether to expand my intuitive knowledge or for protection or for grounding. Um, you don't have to sing, but I bet, I bet you, <laughs> you will eventually crack a, crack a mantra, um, whether it's in tune or not, who cares? But I, I the funniest care. thing about mantra is um, I used to be the little girl who would refuse to sing um, at you? school. I used to, I never told you this, but at school know. I used to be the child that would mouth the songs and the reason for it is I didn't like singing. And um, <laughs> <laughs> it was no way of not getting in trouble when I was at school and I just didn't I like the song. So I was like, no, I'm not singing and they don't mean anything to me. And I think that's where, which my mum finds completely amusing, that now I chant mantra all day. I have mantra playing all day, all night in my house. is like a little, like a Buddha chanting, protecting my house all day, even if I'm not there. And using those sound vibrations to create the power of change. And that's really where sound vibration can be really helpful, is if you're having a really crap day, is 
put on the music, put on the mantra music, and allow that to change the energy and changes your molecular energy that surrounds you and your crystallines, your energy and your aura makes it bigger and brighter and actually just using the sound and sound makes us feel really good oh, and um so good like even if it's not even a mantra song quite often you put on some music and it'll have a hip beat and you'll be like yeah sure i feel good now um and that shows you what sound healing can really do is whether it's mantra whether it's gong crystal bowls or um or even just a happy song i always like um that happy song i can never yeah, remember yeah. yeah it always makes me feel good and you know it's basically just about being happy and yeah you could call that a mantra as, as sort of because it's a, using some words to change how you think yeah. and using the sound vibrations to change how you feel yeah. um generally we'll use more mantras in a in a more a sound frequency so the ones i like to use are in gamuki which has a certain sound frequency that really gets into your mind and can start to cut through all those negative thoughts um, and create the change in the mind because that's the layer that you want to work at if you want to become more conscious is you want to change the way that your mind thinks and operates and be in a more conscious place with the way that you think and that's why I love mantra so whenever you have a thought coming in like an arrow I was Yogi Bhajan would describe thoughts as arrows arrows shooting in at you and then you can use mantra to reflect them or cut them and break out Shoot those thoughts. Away, like yeah, and it is. It is. And it just recycles the way that your brain thinks. And that's a good way if you're a person, if you actually start noticing your own mind, you'll notice that you just cycle thoughts over and over. Like you don't actually have thousands and thousands <laughs> and thousands of thoughts. You do in a day. But if you start to notice, if you be more aware of what you're thinking throughout your day you'll notice that you're a little bit like a tape recorder and you'll have certain things that will go over and over and over and over and if you start noticing those things that's actually another place you can create great change in the way that your mind functions is actually go oh you know what i've thought that like 10 times today is it something i really need to take on and, and digest is it something that maybe one of my guides is trying to like, hey, get the message, send you a message. <laughs> You're just not listening, so it'll just keep giving you the same thought until you pick it up. And then other times it's actually things that we've become more fixated on mm -hmm. because our negative mind is actually our most powerful mind. It's one that is helpful for survival. So it's a very survival instinct. So it means that if your negative mind didn't work properly, you just walk across the road and you wouldn't even look for cars because you'd be like, you know what, I'm all good. Two people do that all the um, time. They're obviously other <laughs> people. They might be. They might be. But the negative <laughs> mind is, is super protective. It protects you from danger. But it also is super powerful and it is the first reactive mind. And that's why quite often we get so caught up in our own negative thoughts and negative chit-chat that goes on and that we can't actually get our way out of out of that block that's there for us and that's where we need to have some tools to help us and that's why for me tools are the most important things is more than reading a book or listening to a podcast or seeing something inspirational but actually having some actual tools that are going to take me inwards break up thought patterns let me reflect more let me have more guidance allow me to listen when I'm not listening, which does happen. Um, and so I make good decisions as well. And that helps you live in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and times with all the lunar changes, with the moon changes, it's a really good time to really use those tools when you're feeling like a crazy person that's not coping, that you need some tools to help you. And they just help you live more happy. And I want to address that because we all feel like a crazy person because we all have moon cycles, periods, hormones, and life. So I just want us to all embrace the dark side of the moon that we hit sometimes. Yeah. With women, you're so much more in tune with the lunar cycles. So we have inner moons. So the external moon being the moon that you see in the sky. And then we've also got inner moons as well. So the most powerful one is the one at the chin. And for men, generally, the reason they grow hair on their 
action is so to make them less sensitized to the moon. So a guy that grows a beard actually will help them cope with the turbulent change of the external moon with their internal moon. So that's this. That's the main <laughs> way, which is interesting because in society at the moment I've noticed that it's really hip for guys to grow beards, which is interesting because if you look at it energetically, it's going to help them cope with the lunar changes. Is that it's going to make a hair on my changes? <laughs> it comes out every time I get my hair. <laughs> so much information. Yes, yeah. it's true. But then with women, we've got 11 moon centers. So if you look at men, they've got their one main one. With women, it's also our main moon center. So when we put pressure onto the chin, it's actually quite helpful at balancing energetically that moon center there. But we've also got a whole lot that run through right through our bodies. And so that's why we are so much more sensitive to the changes in the moon. And quite often, sometimes women will come into the studio and they'll have no idea what's going on with the outer lunar moon, the moon outside, and they'll be like, oh, I didn't sleep all night last night. I'm like, oh yeah, the full moon. And they're like, oh, oh, that's why. And it's amazing how much the effect of the moon can have on our own internal moons that it actually makes us behave differently. It, allow, it makes us feel kind of a little crazy sometimes. Um, but it's about learning how to balance these. And one of the best things we can actually do is actually a, a meditation to balance moon centers for women Ooh. is laying on your belly and having all these moon centers connected to the ground and your chin resting on the ground. And you'd usually use matra as well, but even just laying on the ground, it's a really good one for women to balance through these moon centers and help you cope with the, the external outer moon changes and by balancing your own inner moons because you've got your 11 moon centers that make you so influenced. I love that. So tummy time. Yeah, tummy time's all good for us. <laughs> so, okay, so you're lying on your tummy with your chin kind of, what, what about your arms? Your yeah, arms just beside your sides and then your chin resting on. And it kind of feels a little uncomfortable because we usually when we lay on our belly, we don't stick our chin on the ground. But you want that connection point. It'll help ground you downwards as well. And we would usually just play mantra in the background using Sata Nama which is four easy sounds. It's a primal mantra that balances you out. Sa, ta, na, na. Yeah, sa, ta, na, ma. Four sounds, really easy. It's a cycle of energy. That's basically what it means. Sa means birth, ta means life, ma means death, and ma means rebirth. So it's that cycle of energy change. And everything's about energy change. So when we use that mantra, you can find it online. In, there's lots of artists that sing it. You just play it in the background and lay on your belly and there you go, balancing moon centers. You know what's going to happen. I'm going to go back to work and be in a board meeting. Someone's going to say something trigger me. I'm going to go through a series of thoughts. <laughs> I'm going to need to cut through that and I can't just belt out a mantra. So I'm just going to lie down and have some tummy time. <laughs> like, I'm just balancing my moon centers. <laughs> Internally moon balancing for external moon. I love this. this is, I'm, I'm learning stuff. You guys learning stuff. Feel free to, um, you know, hit us up with some questions. But I'm just, you know, want to recap the, the basics of, um, you know, the time the time that we're in now, how we're all feeling. That Erin's given us um, some top three tools, mindful, listening, um, choosing how we act, um, power of mantra and frequency and music. In our life and then a meditation to help us align with our moons and sort of getting us to help hopefully understand a bit better why why um we feel the way we do why we get so emotional and also if you look at women and the way that their moon cycle so usually you'd call your period cycle a moon cycle because generally it should be 28 days if your hormones are balanced and also if you're also aligned with the moon and um Obviously, I own a yoga studio, which is heavily. There's a lot of women that are heavily influenced by the moon, but you'll notice right. that women generally <laughs> are cycling on the same sort of cycle. So quite often people will get to their bleed part of their cycle or their moon cycle, we call that part, um, either on the new moon or the full moon because that's the time energetically that people will generally balance into. 
And um, you might notice if you start asking all your friends mm -hmm. that you quite often will all cycle on the same set of cycles. Yeah. And it's really fascinating that even if you were on a different cycle and then you move house and you live with different women, they cycle on a different cycle, you'll find that your body will tune in with them. And it shows you how energetically tuned we are. We're tuned in to our own physical bodies, our own energetic bodies, the energetic bodies of somebody else if we're in their presence. So right now, Emma and I, we're in each other's energetic spaces. Yeah, so <laughs> we link time. up a little bit. We and do, then, actually. And it is. It's, whenever you're in somebody else's space in a room, you're actually in, into more group conscious energy. You're in the same cycle of connection. And, um, and then we've also got this bigger energy, which is that energy of the moon and the planets and the effect it has on our own bodies, which are made up heavily of water. And if you look at the tides, they change with the moons. So if you look at our body, it's also going to change with the moons because there's so much water balance in the body. And then all these moon centers, the 11 moon centers in a woman. So... If you're wondering why you've got a lot of change and things sometimes feel a little hard, then there's a lot going on. Yeah, there's fair a lot, enough. There's a lot more than <laughs> just the physical body. So you should expect some sort of turbulence mm -hmm. as all these changes happen. Yeah. And there's also a lot of really cool um, resources out there about um, moon and moon cycles and whether you ovulate with the new moon or menstruate with the full or vice versa and what they can mean and if you're curious about that or if you're like this is all so interesting go have a look there's some great books by um Miranda Gray um there's Warrior Warrior I'm like looking at all my books I've got a whole pile over there there's like Woman Encyclopedia of Myths and Legends Power of Witch goes through it um what else is there Moon spells, that looks interesting. Goddess <laughs> wisdom. Oh, yeah, it's all here. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, and actually, you know what I'll do is I'll um, work with Erin and we'll collaborate in the email after this and we'll give you some resources and some things that you can explore, whether they're meditations or books. Or, and you can actually – actually, I'll give them a link so that they can, yeah. they can contact you. Cool. Yeah. So, I guess um, that's been – Deep. I've loved that. And it actually makes me feel so much more. I mean, <laughs> you open up to the odd person and, and you share that, you know, life life is full of challenges and le lessons, but sometimes you feel like, I mean, I'll be the first to admit, sometimes I feel like as someone that writes about New Age living and spirituality and being mindful, when I'm having a not so mindful moment, it really puts the pressure on and I feel stressed because I, I instantly question I start that cycle of thought, you know, and I, and I want to get out of that and I want to understand how, particularly around the new moon and full moon, I tend to kick off. <laughs> um, so it's nice to talk to other people that are also constantly growing, expanding and learning, mindful, get some more tools and learn some new things because I didn't know about the go. goat, the hair on the, the goatee. <laughs> I'm going to look at <laughs> anything to Google search. Moon center at the chin, and the effect it has on you. <laughs> so, if you were, um, is that why even why people stroke their chin when they're thinking? I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> Interesting. So, I guess does any if anyone has any questions for Erin, hit us up. Otherwise, um, yeah, final reminder about the Tribal Trust Foundation. Um, Obviously, there's totally no pressure. This is a free event, and every month I just like to support a conscious cause or charity. Um, the Tribal Trust Foundation is set up 100% as a charity, so you can get your taxes back if you're that way inclined. But it is um, a divine cause that is really on the up and up. It's a startup, um, but some big and magical, wonderful things are going to be coming out of the Tribal Trust. She's making an incredible documentary. She's travelled the world. She's working with the most amazing young souls and really saving a lot of Indigenous stories and and cultures that would, you know, are just as important as the white elephant and the rhino and the great white shark. So um, please support her. Please at least go check it out. If, worst case scenario, um, you just send her a message of support. I mean, that is a way to mind, mindfully show up today and act and take responsibility for what you're contributing in the world. It would mean a lot to her. It would mean a lot to me. And um, 
yeah, we just need to support each other more, particularly in times of moons when we maybe all feel a little bit. <laughs> so we've got no, no questions for Erin. Um, I'm going to send you guys all out an email. Um, you'll have access to this video so you can come back and watch it. We'll send you guys some, some resources. Um, sat. What? Sat. Sat. Ta. Ta. Na. Ma. Sat. Ta. Yeah. Seems easy. I know I'm going to forget that. Um, yeah. Also, I'd like to share yeah, cool. what I love to do with new moons. Please. So I always have a real thing. I love to celebrate new moons and full moons and really take on board the energy that they hold and Every new moon, I um, I always do a big, deep, meditative kind of practice in the morning. And I always think the new moon is so important to set out intentions. And I know people get so caught on goal setting, but it's actually not. It's kind of what your heart and your soul really desires and knows what needs to happen in that month to come. And there's a difference between that and setting goals that are really just you and your ego trying to create stuff that really shouldn't be created. Um, and so after I do my practice, I always love to sit and reflect and put out what it is that in this month, and I'm not setting things that I'm going to create in the year or next 10 years. It's like, what, what's this month about? And what intentions do I want to hold for this month of what I want to create for myself and for the business that I hold for many other souls to grow and look at what that is and actually write them down. And I find that it's something that I love to reflect on. After some morning practices, I might look at my diary, my little logbook, and, I'll, and I don't write a lot in it, to be honest. I'm not a big writer. I'm more a real experiencer of life than a writer. And I just love to look at what, I, what I'm set out to do for that month. And then when it gets to the full moon, and I quite often get my classes to do this as well, so we'll do our practice, and then at the end, I'll usually suggest that they go home and do this. And then when it gets to the full moon, you can take the power of the full moon to really make those things big and make those things happen. So if you've got to the full moon and you look at your log and you're like, you know what? These things haven't happened. We need some more power for them. And you can actually put even more intention behind allowing those seeds that you planted at the new moon to really manifest and blossom at the full moon. And so every month I love to do this little process. And if you want to follow along and do that too, then it's a really nice way to harness the real power of the moon changes of the new moon bringing the new intentions, the new seeds that you're going to plant, and then the full moon of the power and the fullness of the energy of that extreme power of the full moon of making things happen. And it's a good way to do it rather than setting goals that you think I'm never going to achieve because it's something that you're only looking at a few weeks ahead and it keeps you present and in the moment for that particular month. So that's something I love to do. Yeah, and I love that you um, addressed the goal setting for ego versus for self-development or contribution to community, to people, to things bigger than yourself, like of service. Goal setting is such an interesting one. I used to teach a lot of workshops for it and be big into goal setting. And then, and even when I was younger, I used to always set goals. And one of my goals was to go to med school and be a doctor and the universe had another idea for me um, and did everything possible to make sure that there was no way that that goal could happen in making me incredibly sick in the process of it. Um, and ever since then, it's always made me a little bit more weary of the, the thought of goal setting, of actually you going, this is what I want and this is what you're going to make happen. And it's nearly kind of in a very forceful way and it comes back to the, the things that we were talking about earlier of listening. And it's something that I've had to really embrace in my life of whenever something's not kind of going with the flow of actually listening and reflecting and going, is that me trying to make this happen rather than what's meant to be happening? And I guess that's really where it comes from setting those intentions and actually listening when you set the intentions of, what is really your soul desiring you to do and create and manifest rather than it be 
a real physical process because I'm a big believer in, and I don't mind what everyone else thinks. I used to be a bit of a um, shy person with all this, but now I kind of live and breathe it and live out in the world with it that I believe that life's already planned out for us and it's a matter of really listening and following all those directive cues and it's like we've already got a road map but sometimes we choose to take detour roads that or roundabouts that just <laughs> <laughs> that just get really <laughs> rocky and then all of a sudden we go oh actually i'm going to get back on track again now and um it's just such an interesting process of life is that we choose if we want to take those rocky roads because if you listen really intuitively you'll go, oh no, that's not the right direction. And it's such a fascinating one of the fight between that true instinct and that true self and the ego. And the ego that it loves to drive things and force things that shouldn't be forced through. Um, so when you're doing this process on the new moon, make sure it's a real one of, of listening, of like true feeling of, what it is that you want to experience and what it is that your guides like i i know i work with a little council and i'm like hey where do you think of this idea like we have a little conversation and um i really try to listen to what guidance that they like to give and even if everything in common sense would tell me otherwise and it's always been like that a little bit with even my business golden yogi like everyone externally was like what are you doing and everything internally was like, this is the only option. There is no other option. That is it. Yeah. Um, and it's an interesting one to really go against the grain nearly of what intuitively is there for you and what externally you think you should be doing. That can be two different things. And learning how to filter that. And it takes skill. And even when we are skilled at it, we still make mistakes and we, we, don't, we actually act from that ego space but it'll take practice and we never write. We always make mistakes and we learn and grow from these things too. Mm -hmm. And it makes us get back on track as well when we take a U-turn. <laughs> yeah, the U-turn is fine. Came back for each time. <laughs> it's, it's so funny. I, everything you're saying has been showing up for me in the past week in conversations with like-minded goddesses. So there's another girl, Kim, um, who I can see who makes this beautiful looking jewellery that I'm wearing. It's oh. green energy. I was looking at it before. I was going to ask you where you got it from. <laughs> um, but we were talking about the difference between imitation, inspiration, and intuition. So all the people that are looking for external validation or, or in competition with each other or feeling like they should, they should, or they want, they want, rather than that intuitive reflection and listening. Yeah. Um, which is... I'd like to get your opinion on this. It's almost like a parting of the seas at the moment. The mm -hmm. seas. Um, people that are mindful in a genuine way and people that are mindful in a capitalist way to make money or... And it's not because then maybe that might be the sole driver. Yeah. But I would love to know. I mean, especially with the moon, it's such a, a good time too, like you say create new intentions, focus on the direction of where you're heading. Like, what's your I think on? sometimes we can get caught up in that, how we think we should behave. And also, yes, it, it does come into that capitalist sort of gaining from following that pathway. To be honest, I'm, I'm not a big social media user. If you go on my social media, I probably only have one photo. Um, but I notice that there's a lot of copying and a lot of people photographing and posting things that like are what pe they think people want to see and it's not actually their true essence and it's interesting that this should come up because I'm also on the radio later this week um, talking on the same topic and a bit about social media and this idealistic life that we think we should be living because we see it on social media and if we're not keeping up social media then we think that maybe our life is not good enough and it's actually one big thing, and there's a lot of research out there on this topic of depression and anxiety and social anxiety because people feel like their life's just not good enough. And it's because they see this top 10% of what people are posting and going, you know what, my life's not like that. 
And it's an interesting thing. And people get really addicted to also being on their phones. Um, when I've just been on holiday in Bali, it's been a really eye-opening sort of experience. I travel by myself and holiday by myself, which, um, which was fun. And I caught up with some friends, which was nice. But saying that, also, I'd go out to restaurants by myself sometimes and go and get a meal. And the, it was so interesting to watch how people would behave in a cafe instead of just getting your meal and being like, wow, that's amazing, and being in the moment. Be like, just a minute, I've got to pose the meal and put the smoothie here by this plant and take a photo of me. And I was just like, oh, my gosh, I'm sitting here as a, like, fly on the wall observing this. We behave like crazy people sometimes. Like, it's actually insane. That's what made me think as I walked away from some of these cafes going, I know those smoothies are pretty, but do we really need to pose a photo just to be? And it showed you, it made me even embrace more that idealistic view of social media because it actually was because they were, it's not like they were just like, oh, cool, drink and like take the photo. It was like not candied like that at all. It was very much like, let's pose for the photo and make sure we've got the right background and everything else. Erin, can you just move on there? I know. <laughs> it was just fascinating. Was it yeah, it changed it. Yeah, yeah. Change. And it was And it was such an interesting <laughs> phenomenon to watch and it made me go, you know what? People do live in the zone of wanting to create this perfect life and instead of just being in that moment. So when I would get my meals, I'd be like, oh, wow, this is so amazing and be in the moment of what it tastes like and what textures and what it looks like. Instead, they're so busy trying to create something to post that they actually lose the moment of connection of what they're actually experiencing with a friend or with a group of friends. And um, it made me just go, you know what? Sometimes we just need to come back to just living and being and experiencing and not comparing and not trying to keep up with somebody else and not trying to copy their great idea, like which you do see a lot of, of, of people I going, be wow, I want to just be <laughs> like that, so I'm just going to copy the way that they're doing their business or um, what they're offering or even their whole concepts and everything. And you see it a lot, and I think that it's a real trap and that we have to be really careful of it and remember that we're just, we're just us and just truth and and be in your moment and not be trying to keep up with anyone else because at the end of the day, you're not living your truth, you're living somebody else's. Yeah. Um, well said. Well yeah. said, babe. And I have to say, like, totally reinforce what you said about the phone thing. I was in a waiting room the other day and I would normally be like, perfect, I can get through my emails or work, you know, and I didn't. And I put my phone down. And I watched you run and there was like the gross kid picking his nose in the corner. <laughs> you know, some, of, some of the life I was observing was gross. But it also meant that I could have some time to reflect and digest and listen to my intuition. And sometimes you've actually got to give that a call instead of catching up with everyone else or you're doing your emails or feeling like you need to keep up with the Joneses and, and keep up with society. If this isn't keeping up, if yeah. this isn't keeping up, then you're, you're way more behind than you even realise. So, mm. yeah. Wow, I've learned so much from you. And I learn from Erin every time I just go for a walk down the road. And, <laughs> and I always learn from her too. <laughs> but we're in sync every way, not just in moon cycles, but even if we haven't seen each other for a while, we're normally experiencing some of our life lessons. Um, I'm yep. so grateful that she has made time for all of you guys because um, her insights are divine. Tell me time. That's my fact of the day. I'm going to try to go through that. Um, I will make sure that all of you can connect with Erin, that you have access to her. I'll give you all of her information. It will show up direct in your inbox, direct on our Facebook page. Um, thank you sh um, so much for showing up um, on behalf of everybody who may never thank you or may never understand how much you showing up today can help you and ripple out to things so much bigger than you will ever see or understand. Like, I, for one, am so grateful for people like you, for people like you guys, um, for each of you that, that make the effort, that give me feedback, that tell me your truths, your satnam. Um, I'm just so humbled and, and honoured. And again, Tribal Trust Foundation, should it resonate, even if it's just a positive message, a like on their Facebook page, um, a little email to tell them 
well done for contributing to making this world a better place. You are all amazing. Yeah, I'm just in awe of all of you. So stay tuned for the video. Thank you for your time, Erin. Any passing, ending, closing comments to see us out there? Should we finish the long term, sir? <laughs> for the little words that we always finish with in Kundalini, and they mean so much to me, and I think they might mean so much to you, is may the long time sun shine upon you, all love surround you, and the pure light within you guide your way up. And means so much, and may you let your light shine and love surround you and be at peace with it. Satnam. Bye, beauties.